Hi everyone, today is Tuesday, May 23rd, 2017. My name is Brian McInerney. I'm the hydrologist here at the National Weather Service. And this is a spring snowmelt briefing looking at our runoff from the mountains around Utah. So when you look at temperature and precip for May, this is what we saw. And this is a map of the U.S., but if you look in that circle, that's Utah. It was cooler than normal, which we could have used a little more heat to bring some of this snow off. But we'll take a little bit of cool. And really what it was was we got warm for a period. And then some weather came in and it's cooled things off for a bit. When you look at precip, we're only about 50 to 70 percent in northern Utah. So this was very helpful. We did not need to add to more snow to uh, exacerbate a flood threat that we have right now. When you look at snowpack, we'll look at the Cache Valley as of today. And this is Bug Lake and it's a low elevation snow tell. There is snow water equivalent, the measure of water in the snowpack on the y-axis, time is on the x-axis. The navy line is average for this station. The red line is what we had last year. Teal line is 2011, which was a flood year, and the green line is where we are now. And I think the thing to look at is we're late on this snow melt. We also have about 20 inches remaining up in the mountains. When you melt an inch to an inch and a half per day, you're going to have bank full conditions. If it gets hot, we could be up in two inches per day and anytime you have 20 inches left we have roughly 10 days of melt at this low elevation station when we look at a higher elevation a Tony Grove in the Logan drainage at 8,386 feet what you see was we're at 221 percent of median and again we're roughly about a month three weeks to a month late on this melt and we've got 40 inches of water up in the mountains when you melt, melt at an inch, inch and a half, maybe two inches per day, we're up to 20, 30 days of snow water coolant up in the mountains that we could see. So when you kind of do the math, we're right around mid-June. Most likely we'll see the peak right around the second week of June. So we're still s somewhat far away, but there's a lot of snow at the higher elevations. Low elevation, mid elevation, kind of melted off, but high is still quite large. So how much water are we expecting out of the mountains? And this forecast is made by the Colorado Basin River Forecast Center. Early May, these numbers have dropped just a bit, but essentially it's about twice what you'd expect in the Bear River drainage. And all of northern Utah is above average. When you look at that 115% number, that's Six Creeks, which is east of Salt Lake County, that number's low because they have some low elevation watersheds that had rain and a melt, so they didn't have much snow. But Big and Little Cottonwood still has sizable snowpack up at the higher elevations. And any of these really could produce a brief period of flooding if we get the right temperatures or a rain event. But the Logan River drainage is the one we're going to look at and use this kind of as our proxy. So when you look at stream flow, this is the Logan River that is gauged by the USGS right out of Logan Canyon. The CFS is on the y-axis, which is cubic foot per second. Basketball is the size of about a cubic foot. Rolling past you every second is one CFS. The river typically peaks uh, about the third week of May and about 600 CFS. That's kind of where that peach and blue lines come together. That's the climatology of the Logan River. The red line is flood, where we get damage in the city of Logan, surrounding areas. Yellow line is bankful, where it jumps out of the bank. It might be out of the bank, but it's not causing any damage. And then that green line is what happened in 2011. So if you look at the blue line, that's going up. We have already hit flood stage for about a day, very briefly. And then a weather system came through, cooled things off, the river dropped back down. But this is what we've seen so far. 2011, snowpack was a a lot bigger, but we'll see how this shakes out. Spring snow melt runoff threat, and these are the peak flow forecasts made by the River Forecast Center. And this looks a little busy, but what you want to look at is that green, hor the green vertical line, 90% at the bottom. It's kind of called a box and whisker plot, meaning this is the range of possibilities that we could see on the Logan River. And roughly about 1,700 CFS, we have a 90% chance to reach 1,700 CFS. Remember, flood is at 1,350 CFS. We have a 90% chance to reach 1,700 based on soil moisture, snowpack, and 30 years of climate data modeled and then looked over by the hydrologist. 75% chance of about 1,800, 50% chance above 2,000 CFS, 
and then there's an outside chance we could hit maybe 2300 or even above that but my feeling is that's unlikely unless we get a really heavy extreme warm-up for 10 15 days or a really big rain event during this time but you have a pretty good shot of exceeding flood stage in Logan and above that purple line which is the max they've ever seen so we'll see how this shakes out remember it's a forecast reservoir status as of today this is a teacup diagram by the Bureau of Reclamation and they put the reservoirs in the shape of teacups to give you a better feel for where we are but I think the thing that jumps out at us is we're almost full on the major water supply producing reservoirs in northern Utah in the Wasatch and that's great um, but there's not a whole lot of room for incoming flows if we do get that really big warm-up and if we do get a rain event but water supply looks good there is a flood threat most likely in northern Utah and the highest probability is in Logan City we're going to see how this is going to shake out depending on the temperature and the precip. But as of now, it looks like Sunday, May 28th, is going to be the start of a warm-up. And that's going to really bring the runoff in earnest. And we'll do it from there. Today's the 23rd. We'll go another week. And then I'll put another one of these out. If you have any questions, there's my contact info. Just so you know, we're monitoring this every day as conditions evolve. We're watching the temperature forecast, we're watching any precip that we may have, and then modeling it and try and get that information out to you. So for now, that's Brian McInerney, hydrologist with the National Weather Service, and I do appreciate taking the time to listen to this. Thanks.